Welcome to the presentation on The Lector, a Medium for Proclaiming Holy Scriptures, a workshop from the book Proclaiming Holy Scriptures, a Study of Place and Ritual by Dr. David Pereira. Proclaiming Holy Scriptures is a complex process which involves many different aspects, which David discusses in his book. In considering all these aspects, however, it is the lector, present with their body and voice, that is the most significant medium of communication in transmitting the holy words. The lector is crucial to the liturgical proclamation's success since the lector's body develops its own dynamic. The body becomes a sacramental medium in its own right. In this presentation, we will appraise the experience of proclaiming sacred text in the Christian liturgy. It will be addressed through the following factors. The act of reading, the voice, sacred rituals, the performance, and the assembly. Written words in the ancient world were meant to be pronounced aloud. The practice of reading silently to oneself did not exist. The Hebrew Bible does not differentiate between the act of reading and the act of proclaiming. They both use the same word. The verb kara in Hebrew means to read, call, and proclaim. Reading sacred texts in the Jewish tradition was, and still is, an action that involves the whole body, where the reader expresses themselves through movements following the text's rhythm. In the history of reading, Alberto Mangel says, In sacred texts, where every letter and the number of letters and their order were dictated by the Godhead, full comprehension required not only the eyes, but also the rest of the body, swaying to the cadence of the sentences and lifting to one's lips the holy words so that nothing of the divine could be lost in the reading." End of quotation. The act of reading sets up an intimate spiritual-physical relationship between the text, the reader, and the listeners, in which all the senses have a part, the nose inhaling the scent of the incense, the touch of the reader moving the pages of the book, the sight of the listeners following any expressions of the reader, and the ears capturing the sounds being read. Wolfgang Eiser has worked on trying to understand what happens during the act of reading. He describes how reading sets in motion a whole chain of activities that depends on the text and exercising certain human faculties. He identifies that the reading process produces effects and inspires responses beyond the text and the reader. Iser calls this an aesthetic response. In his words, an aesthetic response is a reformulation of an already formulated reality that brings into the world something that did not exist before. He explains, as the reader passes through the various perspectives offered by the text and relates the different views and pattern to one another, the reader sets the work in motion and so sets himself in motion too. End of quotation. The reading during a proclamation sets the assembly in spiritual motion. The sacred text mobilizes congregants as an invitation to change their hearts. This whole process becomes an event, a dynamic happening experienced by those gathered. Together, we can call this an aesthetic response, following Iser, because it brings into the world something that did not exist before. The lector is at the ambo, ready to proclaim. The assembly waits in expectation observing any physical attitudes and facial expressions that the lector may exteriorize during the proclamation. However, above all, the assembly is anticipating the moment when the holy message 
will be delivered through the lector's voice. Suppose that moment of seeing and listening to the lector brings memories of the past or allusions to the present. In those instances, a strong impression is produced so that the worshiper is engaged effectively, being physically and mentally attentive. The readings become meaningful. Exactly when does this meaning arise in each individual? Meaning appears in the state of wakefulness between the emotional connections and the unconscious memory of the mind. Sacred words make the past become present, and the present meets the past again. In that precise moment, the devotee sees and listens to the lector as one who brings a symbolic character to the proclamation, the voice of God. At the same time, the reader also assumes the authority of being the voice of God. The voice resembles a divine presence. Mladen Dolar says, the voice offered the illusion that one could get immediate access to an unalloyed presence. End of quotation. The voice of God, which resonated in the hearts of the prophets, was put into writing to be read in front of the assembly, giving it life again. This transmission of the word of God continues in the voice of the lector. Sacred texts acquire power only as they are given expression by a living agent with a holy purpose. This briefly explains how the act of reading serves as a metaphor to assist us in understanding our physical, emotional, and spiritual relationship with our body, especially during a religious rite. The reading's resonance as an act of worship is significant in allowing the cultivation of bodily attitudes, dynamism, and plasticity following the liturgical expression of sacred actions. Rituals are sequences of activities involving gestures, words, actions, or objects performed in an arranged place and according to a set sequence. The ritual function of proclaiming the Holy Scriptures is to provide proper rules for liturgical actions that create a bridge for passing into the sacred realm. Guardini says, the people who really live by the liturgy will come to learn that the bodily movements, the actions, and the material objects which it employs are all of the highest significance. It offers great opportunities of expression, of knowledge, and of spiritual experience. It is emancipating in its action and capable of presenting a truth far more strongly and convincingly than can the mere word of mouth. End of quotation. Within the proclamation, the body is the fundamental communicative sign and speech is the more supple sign, allowing for precision in expressing the holy words. From a religious studies perspective, scholars have examined how rituals and emotions are related. For example, anthropologist Pamela Klassen attests there is no doubt that emotional engagement is almost always a part of ritual behavior. Phenomenology has always considered emotion as a part of human perception. Michel Rosaldo calls emotional responses embodied thoughts. During the reading of scriptures, the minister carries the responsibility of proclaiming God's words and, in some instances, could experience a strong emotional response from a prophetic message. The reading of biblical texts may induce a listener to recreate emotions related to past events, apart from the biblical narrative being read by them. Ritual traditions often incorporate the performing arts of poetics and aesthetics in its discourse. A proclamation is a performing act where the sacred meaning can only be fully grasped through its enacting. 
Liturgy entails the proper performance of a more or less fixed script in a setting where everyone is a participant, properly playing their particular role. When a minister proclaims rightly, the performance pushes in the direction of its efficacy, which is the participant's spiritual transformation. Ritual performance entails the creation of a presence. The proclamation of scriptures induces in worshipers a spiritual reality that makes the ritual sacred. The intonation, gestures, and movements of the minister help congregants to experience the reading of scriptures as a sacrament. After congregants listen to the scriptures readings, the lector says, the word of the Lord, and everyone responds, thanks be to God. Their response asserts what they believe, God speaks to them. From the listener's perspective, the phenomenon they witness is God using human language to communicate. However, the language itself is transformed. The language is no longer an instrument, no longer a means, but a manifestation, a revelation of intimate being and of the psychic link which unites us to the world and our fellow men and women. The phenomenological experience can be so strong as to move the faithful toward each other in love, justice, and peace, and toward God in faith, hope, and unwavering confidence. The Word of God has the power of gathering believers into one arena of joint engagement. The reading is more an event than a simple performance. From an exclusively hermeneutical perspective, we could say that the perfect symbol of the presence when reading sacred scriptures during the liturgy is the minister surrounded by an assembly of believers. What can we call presence? St. Paul speaks throughout his letters of being in Christ. Jesus, in his conversation with the Samaritan woman, speaks of worshiping in spirit and truth. In Matthew's Gospel, the presence of the Lord is inscribed in acts of compassion and kindness. Just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. This means the ritual of proclaiming holy scriptures manifests the presence of sanctity. A proclamation's ritual does not point to the sacred or reflect the sacred. Instead, it is the very holy act amid the assembly. The sacred is the collective act. In conclusion, all rituals involving the proclamation of holy scriptures become the generative force of this sacramental event. The Lord be with you. This was a presentation from the book Proclaiming Holy Scriptures, A Study of Place and Ritual by David Pereira.